So in 1779, three years after the you know beginning of the American Revolution, the Declaration, Fourth of July, you know what have you, you had this Spanish king named Charles the Fourth, and they didn't like this Comanche chief named Greenhorn, so De Danza, De Danza, so De Danza, not Tony Danza, but De Danza. <laughs> They ends that allied with the Utes and the Apaches to fight the Comanche. This refers to the San Juan Mountains by Spanish name, meaning mountains of the crane. Said from August 4th, only suffered from bitter cold. So Diaz is like, it's cold in the San Luis Valley. This shit is cold up here. So the Spanish King Charles IV is telling Diaz that he's got to go after Tavibo Norigant. This means dangerous man in Spanish, I believe. But, uh, Greenhorn, right? That's who he is. So, uh, yeah, De Anza, Governor Anza, said that Chief Greenhorn had killed hundreds and sacrificed his prisoners. Anza kept a journal of his fight against the Comanche, Comanche. so he made sure he documented all of this. 1779, he's going to come through the San Luis Valley, one of the first people to do so, one of the first Europeans, one of the first written record people to do so. Now, De Anza had already been bitter, and he hates the Native Americans. The father and the grandfather were killed by the Apaches, so he's already got this hatred for the Native Americans. But the Spanish started it, right? So, in a way, yeah, I see Anza's point, but I also see the Utes and the Apaches' point, too. So, De Anza becomes the governor, 1778, specifically to deal with the Greenhorn problem. Anza studied Chief, uh, Chief Greenhorn's movements. So, become governor, 1778, go after Greenhorn. They're going to kill Greenwood in Colorado, somewhere in between Pueblo and Colorado City, in the gully of the St. Charles's River. So this is in Pueblo County, right? In Pueblo County, in the gully of the St. Charles's River, the leader of the Comanche, probably the Katsoteca, which is a badass name. Comanche is a badass name, and Katsoteca, holy shit. So Chief Greenwood leaves the Katsoteca Comanche, and he wore these green tinted horns as a headdress. Some people say it might have been a single horn, but I believe it's actually been, they took the headdress. It's in the, it's in Italy right now. So yeah, Sierra Verde. So August 1779, one year after Governor Juan Bautista de Anza, right, the Juan Bautista, but Anza, Anza's going to leave a punitive expedition against Chief Green on the Comanche, who they said repeatedly raided towers during the 1779. And Juan Bautista de Anza is going to have his Ute and his Apache allies with him. There's 500 to 800 Spanish soldiers with Anza that's marching to the San Luis Valley. They march north, right from Santa Fe, was the capital. Still the capital. Later entered the Great Plains at Manitou, Manitou Springs, which is just way, way over. So he goes to the San Luis Valley and he leaves the San Luis Valley. But he attacks the Comanche near Colorado Springs. He crosses the Arkansas River near present-day Pueblo. Pikes Peak is also called El Capitan. So they found, you know, Chief Sierra Noverde Greenhorn slipping. Greenhorn Creek is named after him Greenhorn Mountain and Greenhorn Valley. And they're all in Pueblo County, Mike, maybe not exactly where he fell, but close to it. So, the Juan Bautista de Anza is going all over the place, right? He goes to the San Luis Valley, goes out, goes to Manitou Springs, goes to the Colorado Springs, finds Comanche there. But I heard that was just his, the, you know, women and children. He was out and about, so they attack his people at the village, and then they went out to find him, and then they find him, they crisscross him, you know, coming back from a hunt, and then they fight it out. So, they're in Colorado Springs. In Pueblo, I mean, this is this is a three-hour drive to Pueblo, three-hour drive to, you know, maybe an hour and a half or two hours to Colorado Springs, so it's not like it's <laughs> uh, just one day they was here, the next day they was there. But eventually they catch up with them. Governor Juan Bautista de Anza, with his 800 Spanish soldiers, they find Chief Greenhorn, and they're going to kill him and his son and four other chiefs and a whole bunch of other Comanche leaders. They just exterminate them, just wipe them the fuck out. So 1779, this is 85 years after the first Spaniard, 
Don Diego de Vargas came up here. So we haven't had anybody come up to the San Luis Valley, even though the Spanish has been down in New Mexico for quite some time. It took them 85 years, right? 1694, they came up here for about six days, saw some buffalo, killed some mutes, and then, you know, left. And then 85 years later, they're going to come back and again killing more Native Americans. Now, it might be if he is to be believed to be killed hundreds and he's attacking, you know, the Pueblo peoples and whatnot. I don't know. I'll tell you my conclusion at the end of what I think about Chief Greenhorn himself. I mean, to fight the imperialist, it's, uh... He doesn't look, you know, that awful. It would have been awful back in those days if you were a Spaniard, right? But you're an imperialist and colonizing, and you're taking his land, and he, you know, knew it. So Juan Batista Day is uh, August 19, 1779, entered the San Luis Valley. And then September, September 4th, he's going to re-enter the San Luis Valley at the Levada Pass near Fort Gullen on his way back to Santa Fe. So he already killed the guy, and now he's going to cross the San Luis Valley once again, crossing the Levada Pass, you know, just like um, Pike is going to do in 1807. But they is uh, allied with the Utes and the Apaches and the Pueblos to fight the Comanche. 1776? No, 1779. New Mexico Governor Juan Bautista de Anza goes against the Comanche Chief Sierra Verde Greenhorn. That's the big next Spanish push into the region. Juan Bautista de Anza. In a huge entourage of men, livestock probably traveled near the sand dunes as they returned from a punitive raid against a group of Comanches. So, yeah, they came through the San Luis Valley. They came through the Veda Pass, across the Rio Grande, and, you know, probably the Cubro, Culebra, Rio, you know, Castillo. Cots to take a Comanche, huh? So, yeah, he's going to go up through the San Luis Valley to avoid detection of the Comanches, and he did good, right? He did it. He was successful August 22nd. He was able to, you know, track this, you know, chief, track him, found him, saw his movements, understood his behavior and habits, and then was able to ultimately attack him. Now, Greenhorn, he, his father was killed by the Spanish. So yeah, Anza's father was killed by the Apache, but his Greenhorn's father, and his name was Greenhorn, October 1768. So he had to avenge his father's name, so he adopted his father's name, and then he adopted his father's war. August 31st, September 3rd, 1779, with Tal Bevo killed. Right, they're going to kill Greenhorn, but also his firstborn son, the medicine man, and 15 others. They trapped him and his closest friends in a gully. St. Charles River dismounted from his fallen horse, shouted, kill me now, watch become millions. Now he was actually firing from behind his horse. So he's in a ditch, in a gully, and then the, force goes, the horse goes down, he's behind the horse, using it as a shield, fighting back, but eventually he's going to get shot and killed with a bunch of lead balls. Now Governor Anza makes green horns seem like he's a bit pretentious. He said during the battle, his musket was loaded for him three times during his final battle. Now, I could see that. He's going around with green horn headdress, right? And that headdress of green horn is going to be taken for the battlefield. It's presented to the Viceroy, who probably had the power, not Charles, but the Viceroy, Teodoro de Cro by De Anza. So De Anza gave it to the Viceroy, Teodoro de Cro. The crew, the Viceroy in return presented the headdress to the King of Spain, and then the King of Spain turned around and gave it to the Pope. The Poop, right, old Poop Leroy Jones, old Poop Boniface, Poop Sarah. I don't know who the Pope is now, but uh, is it Poop? I mean, maybe that's, they meant it not Pope, it's Poop because he's a shit. Poop Clement the Fourth, old Poop Boniface. So that seems very weird to me. Green orange headdress remains on display at the Vatican Museum in Rome. That's pretty gross. Skulls and bones, I think. I don't know. Some groups, they collect famous skulls. Nat Turner's skulls pass around in secret for decades before it finally came to light. It needs to be put in a museum. We need to preserve history. Green Horn Mountain, Colorado is the highest point in Pueblo, Colorado, the highest summit of Wet Mountains Range in Rocky Mountains, 12,352 foot tall, located five miles southwest of the town of Rye. 
can be seen from Walson Bird, Colorado. So the Green Horn Mountain is in Pueblo, Colorado, the Pueblo County. Green Horn Valley, Colorado lies just to the east of Green Horn Mountain. And that includes the communities of Colorado City and Rye in Pueblo County. So people will say it's not the exact spot. It's in Pueblo County. It's right near, you know, Green Horn Creek. Green Horn Creek. It's all named after him in the same county where he died, and I bet you it's probably closer than where people think. So Spanish King Charles IV, why did De Anza, why did Green Horn, you know, get killed? Because King Charles IV, he actually wasn't running nothing. King, King Charles IV is going to get deposed, but he kept, you know, his kingship in spite of the American and French revolutions, which is right next door. So Pike is going to cross Sun Guard to Crystal Mountains into the San Luis Valley in 1807, first Englishman to do so, but the Spaniard Anza did the same thing in 1779, 28 years prior. He's going to cross the Levada Pass. So Anza beat Pike, and he's going to beat, you know, um, the other guy, Jacob Fowler. So Jacob Fowler crossed the San Grey de Cristo Mountains in a different spot. But, uh, so what's my feelings on, you know, Green Horn? I like... When I read history, all the Native Americans who capitulated, who signed agreements, who, you know, got wiped out, who got massacred, who got killed and starved out and what have you, they, you know, kind of, they look like chumps, and they're put on the reservation. So some people got, you know, a collateral, a sort of a severance package. Okay, you can't be Americans, but we'll give you a part of America. What do you say? You all get to govern your own self. You're a nation within the nation. But what do you... Why didn't we do integration? We should have done integration. That doesn't... So, with the Spanish, I think it's, it's good and proper to overthrow an oppressor, an imperialist, colonizing, an oppressive son of a bitch, and the natives could probably feel the oppression, right? Now, the thing that makes me a little bit uncertain is the other natives who were the allies. Now, it's, you know, that's what they say on paper, but what kind of allies were they? Like the Iraq War allies, or were they like, you know, World War II allies? It's like, we've got to band together because we've got to fight this, or it's like, hey, I kind of got, you know, I twisted the arm of all these poor countries to get a coalition of the willing going. So I'm okay with kind of both the Anza and Greenhorn going after each other because both the opposite had killed their fathers, but I guess if they wanted peace, they could have just, you know, worked out a deal. But just like Indigo Montoya, you kill my father, prepared to die. So the Spaniards are oppressors, invaders, outsiders. So while Anza said that Green Horde killed hundreds, hundreds of Spaniards or the natives? The colonizers or the humble people, the Puebloans? I must consider, you know, the Apaches and the Utes and the Pueblo natives apparently allied with the Spanish. So either the Spanish twisted their arms, and they weren't really willing, you know, a, a coalition of the willing, but they were twi their arms were twisted, or they were like, hell yeah, it's about time we go after this Comanche, you know, bastard, because we're sick and tired of him. So I feel like I got to look into it a little bit more, right? It's always, you know, history, right? The more you learn, the more you can understand them. So either the Spanish, right, so either they were willing allies because the Comanches were that terrible, so the verdict is still out with me on this. So I don't like that there's some doubt to the thing. In general, Greenhorn is a champion, fought against the Spanish, you know, conquistadors, and now the Spanish are gone. So if Greenhorn wasn't fighting the Spanish conquistadors, it would have been, you know, the Americans or the English or the French or who the hell ever. And so ultimately the Spanish was kicked out, right, by the Mexicans, by the Native Americans themselves. They... Shut the Spanish out. Fuck you, Span you know, Spaniard bastard motherfuckers. And uh, so they understand, you know, um, the freedom and having their own country and their own land. So it sucks that Chief Greenhorn isn't perfect. He's, uh, you know, it's, I don't know if he's good or bad, but I know that there's definitely, he's, you know, there's some good, some bad. So, but it, there's definitely better Native American heroes out there, so that's, you know, Plucky Munity, uh, Taugayita, Tecumseh, Pontiac, Tierra Blanca, Tupac Katari, just a whole bunch of. The Comanche, that was the enemy, right? They called the meaning of Comanche and Apache is enemy. And I want to say the Navajo. The Navajo named the Comanche, so they're the enemy. That's what Comanche literally means. Comanche is, you know, it's a strong name, and so when it comes to the, you know, the imperialist occupied invaders, right, that's a good fight, but if they're victimizing a bunch of poor, 
you know, poor uh, farming, you know, natives, then they're doing the same shit the Spanish was doing. And they're, you know, making enemies against all these other Native American tribes, too. So it's kind of like they're their own nation, their own culture, and they're going to war against, you know, they're like Hitler. They're not going to just war against one or two countries. They're going to just go to war against everybody. So, Massasoit, Wamsutta, Metacomet, those, you know, the Pilgrim, the, you know, Wampanoags, the Plucky Minoti, the father of Tecumseh, Pontiac, after the British had defeated the French, Pontiac and the natives said, we're not done yet. Tierra Blanca, Tupac Atari, Dragon Canoe, all these are way better Native Americans, and Greenhorn, so Greenhorn's okay. You know, I like the Greenhorn, and he's, you know, but he does seem pretentious. I could see, you know, a Native American just being the leader and getting some of the stronger men to sort of just do everything for him because he's the one on top. Uh, I could see him swindling or get to that position and just kind of enjoy him being at the top, but that's um, a lot of shit that the Spanish, you know, generals, they, I mean, George Watson had tights and wigs and shit. So it's like, what are you... What is this doing? I, you know, I'd rather my leader, I wish George Washington would have had green horns. I'd rather have a helmet, his helmet be a green horn helmet. So there you go, 1779, Governor Anza is going to march on up to, through the San Luis Valley twice, through, up, and then back down, goes out, up, around Pueblo, Colorado uh, Springs. Wait, I might be thinking Colorado City. No, I, I'm not going to. Okay, so anyways, 7-19-2020, July 16th, Thursday. Peace.